To understand what's going on under the hood of a neural network, it helps to dive down to the level of a single neuron, and to think about the connections between individual neurons when we're performing a forward pass to compute activations or a backward pass to compute deltas. And while thinking about nodes and edges is great for building intuition, it's not at all how deep learning actually works. If we want to build large-scale neural networks that can be trained efficiently, we have to move to a higher level of abstraction and start thinking in terms of vectors, matrices, and tensors. Our first step in that direction is to represent a layer's activations as a vector. If our neural network is organized into layers, then we can collect the activations of a layer into a vector. Here, the vector AL stores all of the activations for layer L, and so it has as many entries as the layer has nodes. Likewise, when we're performing backpropagation, we can collect the deltas for a layer into a vector, where each entry gives us the delta value for one of the nodes in the layer. And along the same lines, we can collect up a vector to represent a layer's biases or its inputs. And to translate the computations we've been performing into this notation, we can first think about how a node computes its weighted sum of inputs. The input x5 that goes into the activation function for node 5 is calculated as a weighted sum of previous layer activations plus a bias. And so if we've collected those previous layer activations into the vector ak, and we have a vector of all of the weights coming into node 5, then the weighted sum of inputs is a dot product between those two vectors. And another way of writing the dot product is to transpose the first vector and multiply the row vector with the column vector. So we can express the input to node 5 as the weight vector coming into node 5, transpose, times the activation vector for the previous layer, plus node 5's bias. But this vectorized notation can go much further and let us talk about calculating the entire vector of inputs to layer L at once. If we combine our row vector of weights for node 5 with row vectors of weights for each of the other neurons in that layer, the result is a matrix containing all of the weights from layer K to layer L. This weight matrix has as many rows as there are nodes in layer L, because each row is a vector of weights into one of the layer L neurons and it has as many columns as there are nodes in the previous layer, K, because each column of this matrix corresponds to a vector of weights coming out of one of the layer K nodes. And if we multiply this weight matrix times the activation vector for layer K, the result is equivalent to having performed each of the dot products with a row from the matrix and the vector of activations. So this will give us a three element vector where each element is the weighted sum of inputs for one of the layer L nodes. And to get the activation function inputs, we need to add on each of the biases, but since we've collected the biases into a vector, that can be added to the three vector we get from this multiplication. And we've now expressed in terms of a matrix vector multiplication and a vector addition, the operations for calculating all of the inputs to this layer that used to take us a double for loop. Once we have this vector of inputs, we can think about getting the vector of activations for this layer and each activation is computed by applying the activation function to that node's input. 
But if our activation function can be vectorized, that is broadcast to operate on each element of an array, then we can calculate all of the activations by a single call to our vectorized activation function. I will use the notation f dot, which is consistent with how Julia represents element-wise operations, to indicate that the function f is being applied to every element of the vector xl, and this produces each of the elements of the vector al. And this means that an entire forward pass through a neural network can be performed by matrix vector multiplication, vector addition, and element-wise functions. So now we'd like to vectorize the backward pass where we're computing deltas. When thinking about one neuron at a time, the delta for a node in layer k was a weighted sum of all of the deltas at the next layer times the derivative of that node's activation function. But once again, the weighted sum can be expressed as a dot product, and so we can think of that operation as multiplying a row vector of weights coming out of node 3 by the vector of deltas for layer L, and then multiplying by the activation derivative. But as we did before, we'd like to collect up the calculation of all the deltas in a layer into a single vectorized operation. And again, we can use our weight matrix because it collects W3 and each of the other vectors of weights coming out of layer L neurons. And we're going to multiply it by the vector of deltas for layer L. And since that is a three vector, and we want to get a four vector as output, we need to transpose this matrix so that we get a four by three, which we can multiply by our three vector and get a four vector. So this multiplication is equivalent to doing four dot products. The first is between the delta L vector and the vector of weights coming out of node 1. The second is between delta L and the weight 2 vector. And the last two components correspond to nodes 3 and 4. But then for each of those nodes where we've done a dot product, we need to multiply the result by the activation derivative for that neuron, and we can use another vectorized function for the derivative of f. And since we think of our derivatives in terms of the activations, this is evaluated on the ak vector. But now to get this delta vector for layer k, we want each element to correspond to multiplying the derivative by the result of the dot product. And so that means we want element one of this vector to be multiplied by element one of this vector, element two multiplied by element two, and so on to build up the delta k vector. And the name of the operation that does this element-wise multiplication between two vectors is the Hadamard product. I'll use this symbol with a dot inside a circle to indicate the Hadamard product but the name here makes it sound way fancier than it is. To implement this operation in Julia, we can just do dot times to cause each corresponding element of the two vectors to be multiplied into the output vector. So now we've vectorized the forward pass to compute activations and the backward pass to compute deltas, but we'd still like to vectorize the third pass over the neural network to update the weights. But before we get there, we can make our calculations even more efficient by vectorizing over another dimension, which stores the batch. If we want to compute activations on an entire batch of data, we're performing the same sequence of operations on each of the input points. And so we can collect up the input vectors and combine them into an input matrix and then replace our matrix vector multiplications with matrix matrix multiplication to operate on the entire batch at once.
So now, at each layer, instead of having just a vector of the activations for a single data point, we will have a matrix where each column is a vector of activations for one data point, and we will have as many columns as there are data points in the batch. Now when we multiply the weight matrix by this matrix of activations, it will be like simultaneously doing the multiplication of the weight matrix times the vector for each of these vectors. So now we can produce the matrix of inputs to layer L, where each column of this matrix corresponds to the input vector for a different data point by performing the matrix matrix multiplication between the weights and the previous layer activations, and then adding the vector of biases. But my notation here indicates that we are adding a matrix plus a vector, and what we really want is to add this vector to each of the columns of the matrix, because before, the input vector for each individual data point had the bias vector added on. And so we need to indicate that this is actually being added to each column of the matrix. And by analogy with our Hadamard product, I'll put a circle around the plus. This is not a standard symbol, but I hope it's clear what it means. And again, in Julia, we can implement this with a dot plus operation that will broadcast over the columns of the matrix. And we'd like to continue moving forward in terms of these batch matrices, so we can think about the activations for the next layer by applying our element-wise activation function to the entire input matrix. Now that we have operations to go from the matrix of activations from one layer via the inputs to the matrix of activations for the next layer, we can perform a single forward pass to calculate the activations for an entire batch of data. And now we'd like to vectorize over the batch on our backward pass. And the idea is similar we'll define a matrix of deltas, much like we defined a matrix of activations. Where again, all we've done here is collect up the delta vectors for individual data points into the columns of this matrix, so the matrix now represents all of the deltas on layer L, for the entire batch. And now we'd like to extend our calculation of the delta vector to get the delta matrix for the previous layer. Once again, our matrix version looks an awful lot like the vector version, only we've extended out this vector of deltas into a matrix where each column is the deltas for a different data point, and we've also extended out this vector of activations into an activation matrix. And the result is that with a single matrix multiplication, we can calculate the weighted sum of next layer deltas for every node in layer K and every data point in the batch, and then we can element-wise multiply with our activation derivatives to get the deltas at layer k. From here, we have just two more steps remaining. The first is that while we know how to propagate deltas backwards, we haven't yet shown how to calculate the output deltas. This calculation will be different for various combinations of output layer activations and loss function. And while all of them can be vectorized, that would take us too far afield in this video, and so I'll leave it as an exercise for you. But the last step is to vectorize our updating of weights and biases. We know from previous videos that the update to each weight is based on an average of delta times activation for each point in the batch. But just like all of our other weighted sums, it can be expressed as a dot product.
Here we have the vector that collects all of the deltas for node 5 across the batch, and this corresponds to the first row of our matrix of deltas for layer L, and we're dotting that with the vector of all of the activations for node 3 across the batch, which corresponds to the third row of our AK matrix. This dot product adds up delta times activation for each point in the batch, and so dividing by batch size gives us an average update, and then we can take a step in the minus gradient direction of size determined by our learning rate eta. And yet again, we can collect up this update for all of the weights in this matrix as a single vectorized operation. If we multiply our matrix of deltas for layer L by the transpose of our weight matrix for layer K, since this is an L by B matrix, and the transpose here is B by K, the result will be an L by K matrix, whose dimensions match our weight matrix. And the first entry in this matrix comes from multiplying the top row of this matrix by the first column of this matrix, and the first column of the transpose is the first row of this matrix, so that will be the dot product between the vector of activations across the batch for the first neuron in layer L, and the vector of deltas across the batch for the first neuron in layer K. And so this top left entry is the vector of batch deltas for node 5 dotted with the vector of batch activations for node 1, which is exactly what we need to perform the update to the weight from 1 to 5. And as we move down the first column of this matrix, we get the other dot products with this vector of activations for node 1, with respectively the deltas for node 6 and the deltas for node 7. The next column will contain all of the dot products involving the activations for node 2, and then 3 and 4. So I'll now finish writing this out, and note that I've dropped the B superscript, but remember that each of these vectors has length equal to the number of data points in the batch. And so we can use this matrix to perform the updates to the entire matrix of weights in a single operation. where we divide all of these dot products by the size of the batch to turn them into averages, and then we take a step in the minus gradient direction of size equal to our learning rate. The update for the bias is simpler because we just have to take an average across the columns to get a single delta vector averaged over the batch and then we can subtract a learning rate multiple of that vector from the biases. And so now we can do all of our computations on a feed-forward, densely connected neural network using matrix operations. In the vast majority of programming languages, just translating into matrices will give us a huge speed-up, but the biggest performance gain comes from the fact that matrix operations can be ported to other hardware, like a graphics processor, that can dramatically accelerate these operations.